Good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's Ross here at Peach of Toolkit. Uh, I'm either large on your screen or I'm in the top right hand corner. I'm just going to do a little bit of admin um, and let people have a moment just to log in. Um, if you can just say hello in the chat box, that comes to me only. Uh, and wherever you are, a little village by the sea or in the countryside or a large town or city, I'll give your town a shout out to everyone watching this. So let me know where you're watching from. Um, while we just get a few more people joining in. And while you are doing that in the chat box, if I just show you where people have signed up from, uh, we've got at least 40 countries. Uh, people signed up today, uh, and I know one or two will be watching this recorded. Um, so in the chat box, let me know where you're watching from. Uh, so we've got Gravesend, Greater Manchester, Mosley, to be precise, if I pronounced that correctly, Ruth. Um, South Wales, from Barry Island. I've been to Barry Island, Dawn. Uh, where else? Anyone international? We've got Pam. Hi, Pam, from Cambridge. Uh, I know you very well, uh, so it's nice for you to join me. Oakton. Swansea, Margate, Abu Dhabi, Liverpool. I can't pronounce that. Is it Gid Gidnia in Poland? So thanks for watching. The Scottish Highlands, Andrew, you get my vote today. In fact, Sarah's just beaten you with the Isle of Mull. If someone watching from New Zealand, okay, fantastic. Um, okay, I won't be able to read them all out. Sheffield, Texas. Okay, so literally everywhere. And um, if I just take that slide off for a second, and I'm just going to show you a little bit more of a heat map of people that have signed up from the UK. Um, so there you go. So that's where people have signed up from the UK. So you might be able to see your little dot. I can see the highlands there. Um, I'm not biased. Um, so while people log in and you get familiar with the technology, some of you will be new, uh, new to Zoom. Um, in the right hand corner or on your device, you should be able to switch between speaker view or gallery view. You can have your cameras on or off and um, your microphones are muted by default. Uh, it's all getting recorded and I'll share it with everyone on the Eventbrite page afterwards. Um, so just a kind of little introduction um, to make sure that you're in the right place. Uh, I wonder how many of us have joined an accidental Zoom uh, call without us really knowing where we're supposed to be. So this is a, a, a teach active session. Uh, we're looking at active learning. And um, reason being, it's a perfect time for us to step back, realign the curriculum and concentrate on having a curriculum which is really purposeful to children. And I know that people are watching from a variety of locations. So we are gonna try and put a um, English uh, education hat on. Uh, uh, when I bring John in and Steve, we'll try and add in an international twist to it where we can. Um, so the key questions that we're going to be going through today um, is how teach active in this kind of COVID catch up solution uh, uh, could be a solution for your school, how active learning can help your children's mental health, how teach active can be used in other schools. We're going to bring in head teacher Steve Pindall to explain how he uses it in his school. A couple of others, how schools can meet the Department for Education's expectations of remote teaching, uh, so that's here in England. And how Teach Active can reduce teacher workload, which is a, a deep fascination of mine. Um, so just some technical stuff before we start. Um, web, this recording's getting, um, uh, so it's getting recorded. Um, there are three or four slides. It's going to be a bit more of a chat discussion. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat box. Those messages come to me only. Um, so I can read out any questions on your behalf. Uh, once we get to the end of the formalities, um, you can hang on the line and we can just pose some just general questions if you want to have a discussion. Um, and we'll survey, uh, we'll send all the slides, uh, etc., with you uh, once we finish. Um, I'm going to do some introductions, uh, let you know who's participating. And then I've got a little survey that I would like to put on your screen just to get a bit of feedback, see who we're working with. And then we'll get started. Um, so grab yourself a cup of coffee and uh, we'll crack on in five minutes. Um, so I'm gonna ask um, John first, um, to just unmute yourself, John, and then just introduce yourself to everyone and tell us what you do. Okay, brilliant. Good evening to everyone or whatever time it may be you're joining this from. Uh, nice to be working with you all this evening. I can see some uh, names and some that I, I am familiar with and I know, so um, great to see some of you again. And yeah, for all of those people I haven't met before, lovely to meet you. So. 
As Ross said, my name is John Smedley. I'm the, the founder of Teach Active. Um, and my background very much as a, as a teacher. I've taught uh, mainly primary school. I have taught primary and secondary, uh, but mainly primary school for years. I was a PE uh, advisory teacher, so hence my love of getting children up and about and active, um, and then looking at the wider benefits of that. And then I went back into school, I was a deputy head um, for seven years, and I left six years ago in order to set Teach Active up. And Teach Active, we, we do two things, basically. Number one is the, the resource and the website that we have, um, which we'll demonstrate to you and show you later. Um, and that's a resource that schools all over the UK and internationally subscribe to, and they use that in order to bring activity into their English and maths lessons. But the other part that we do is we, we deliver lots of teacher training. And over the six years, we've worked with thousands of schools. Last year, or face-to-face, -face, doing a lot of, um, you know, my life was traveling around a lot, teacher CPD. And this year, like many, it's now a life of delivering to teachers over Zoom. So it's still great that we can, um, in some ways, you know, some great things have come from it because, you know, as Ross said, 40 different countries joining us today. So it's great that we can do that. And yeah, and I hope that you're going to find the, this session really informative and beneficial and we can give you some key nuggets to go away with to um, try back at school and something that you're going to really enjoy doing with the, the, the children that you work with and the schools that you work with as well. Okay, thank you, John. Um, Steve, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and, and introduce yourself. Uh, so for people watching overseas, uh, Steve is a head teacher of a primary school in the south of England. So maybe Steve, just give us a bit more kind of, kind of demographic data plus your experience uh, and then we'll get started. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Ross. Um, evening, everyone. It's, it's always a privilege to, uh, to talk to other teachers. Um, so my name is Steve Tyndall. I'm the head teacher of the Holy Family School in Adelston in Surrey. Uh, I took up that post in September of 2012, just after the uh, London Olympics. I've been a teacher 30 years now. Um, and my, one of my greatest passions, two things really, I guess, PE. Uh, but my greatest passion was, is for breaking down barriers for children in mathematics in particular. Um, so that's when I sort of met up with John uh, five, six years ago. Um, and a lot of my work, most of my work um, that I'm probably talking about tonight is, is linked to maths rather than to English. Um, but Teach Active can do both. Um, I think that the success we've had in our school for maths can be replicated quite easily for English too. Okay, uh, thank you, Steve. So in the chat box, everybody, um, Steve, I could just ask you to make yourself thank you. Um, in the chat box, you've got uh, the link to Steve's School, so you can find out a little bit more about his work and the wonderful teachers in his school, in his community. Um, so we're going to get started. Before I do, uh, I'm going to put a survey on your screen. Now, if you've not done a Zoom survey before, just three questions. Um, you need to complete all three to then press submit, and I'll, I'll give you 30 seconds or so um, to do that on your side. And uh, so scroll down press submit, and then I will reveal the results. So just getting a little bit about who are you, why you're here, that type of stuff. So 30 seconds. Uh, and while you're doing that, if you would like to uh, double your workload in the chat box, uh, let me know what your current challenges are and I'll share some snippets with everybody. So people working in, outside of the UK would be really interested in your COVID challenges as a teacher, as a parent, homeschooling, etc. Um, so once you've done the results, put those in the chat box and I will uh, share them. So I know we've got a wide range of people um, from parents, consultants, head teachers, governors, etc. Uh, and if you can't see the survey, uh, if you just let me know which device you're working on, I can give you some advice. So if you're watching on the phone or iPad, you might need to just tap the screen to reveal some options. Uh, but again, iPad, Android devices, those type of things. Uh, and apologies uh, if I've not put uh, the wonderful work of our support staff and teaching assistants on that survey, that is an error on my part. Um, okay, uh, so we've got uh, a number of responses in. 
Uh, let me just share those results with you on the screen. So there they are there. So just take a moment to digest those. And while you're doing that, uh, let me just read out some comments from some of you in the chat box. Um, so new teachers joining the profession right now, that's going to be a tough uh, gig, you know, learning your, learning your teaching techniques in a remote world. Um, how to engage and be interactive, uh, being stuck in the classroom at the moment with limited options, uh, be, not being able to move around the school. Um, and any other comments, send them through. Um, so that all the kind of challenges that we have, I'll read some of those as we go through. Okay, so there's our first survey. Um, let's take that off the screen and crack on. So um, we've got our introductions So John, Steve and myself. Um, the Department for Education here in England has asked schools um, to prioritise physical learning, um, you know, recovery curriculum, uh, lockdown, all those types of challenges. So how can schools best achieve this? So rather than a new initiative after another and asking teachers to do more, how can we incorporate physically active learning into our lessons? So I'm going to start with John on this one. What is active learning, John? Uh, maybe kind of clarify some mis uh, you know, misconceptions, some myths, and maybe signpost some good examples that you're aware of. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Ross. Yeah, it's always an interesting one, and it's 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 one a battle with over the, the the last six years in really trying to uh, perhaps get in front of teachers and head teachers and talk about the difference that it can make because of course you know in many schools the priority is is reading writing and maths and you know as you know as being a school leader in the past myself I understand uh, the reasons of that but active learning I think some people think oh it's just more PE it's just going out it's running around it's getting a sweat on and actually it's and, and perhaps thinking it, it's airy fairy and it's it, it's all good fun and it's and um, yes it is good fun it is enjoyable children do love it uh, it really helps with that lo love of learning but it, it's not PE you know PE is it, it is great and has its own place but what we mean by active learning and physically active learning is simply just children getting up a, 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 and getting up and getting about and moving and that can be simply just in the classroom and it can be bums off seats it can be non-sedentary behavior where we we don't want the children to be sat down for long periods of time so we're using the space which we perhaps have got which is just the classroom and of course it's great that if we can go down to the hall if we've got other areas within the school that we can utilize if the weather's lovely um let's get the i laugh because perhaps it's definitely not in the uk at the moment but then we can get the children outside and, and learning in that respect as well but yes, it's not PE, it's, it's perhaps incorporating movement into other areas of the curriculum. And of course, the part that I specialize in that is, is actually how can we teach maths and English, but rather than being that formal way of sat down at a desk, at a chair, how we can do it in alternative ways, um, which are perhaps fun, engaging, and just as effective, if not more effective as well. Okay, thank you, John. Steve, I'm going to bring you in here. I, I'd, I'm probably going to give you two or three questions in one here. Um, what kind of physical curriculum did you offer before COVID? What have you tried to deliver during COVID uh, from a remote perspective? And maybe just tell us uh, to begin with how you use Teach Active. So three questions there. Uh, before, during, and then how are you using Teach Active? Okay. Um... So before, I think it's worth pointing out, you know, children, children are in school, in primary school, in the classroom for around about 7,000 hours um, between reception and, and year six. That's a lot of time to be sitting down. Um, we talk about 60 active minutes a day. It's a long time. So before COVID, um, we introduced, when I started in 2012, we introduced um, active, an active learning element to our curriculum. And what that means is, John's right, it doesn't mean charging around the playground. It means getting children up um, and engaging them in a different way, children taking ownership of their own learning. It's based on a, on a theory of, called constructivism, which is about children building their own learning or constructing their own learning by taking the knowledge and understanding they've got um, and then using it, analyzing, synthesizing their ideas, um, communicating with others and so that they're taking ownership, not of, just of their own learning, but those around them. Um, so we, as often as possible pre-COVID, if you came into my school, you'd see them 
out of their out of their seats. You know, and a simple example: if we're doing Year Five Victorians and we're teaching them about the diseases of Victorians, we can just give them that information. But but research tells us that you can't just transmit learning by telling them so. So we will get our face painted. Six children, put them in a, a make. We'll, we'll create a hospital. Give them the symptoms of of, a, of the illness. Six different illnesses. We'll give the children the the, um, the opportunity to interview them, to talk to them about their symptoms, how they're feeling, um, and then by doing that, they un they then go back and they understand more deeply um, the concepts that we're trying to teach them because they've lived it and they've done the role play and they've acted it out um, and they've taken ownership with their questions they get a deeper level of learning. Active learning gives a deeper learning than, than just transmitting information, which is a surface level. Um, so we would do that right across our curriculum. Um, children are used to role play, to discussion, to group work, um, to being out of their seats, to going outside for maths. Um, during, the, during the lockdown, it's been, because it's so embedded in our school, it's been, relatively easy to get children to do things at home um, because parents are used to it now we've been doing it five or six years so parents are used to it so they know how the children work in school um, so they've been able to to use those sort of investigation skills and, and the discussion skills that we take in school um, it's not the same it's not as good as being in school obviously um, but it's allowed a smoother transition i think and we were really worried when they came back in September that they'd be miles behind and their social skills would have gone and, and their investigation skills would have gone. But actually, we were pleasantly surprised. Their stamina had reduced, um, but, but the actual skills were still there, just needed to be repolished. Um, and in terms of Teach Active, um, I started, it's really important with something like this, that you start small and you build. You know, don't try and, and, and run before you can walk. Um, we started with some very specific target groups of children who we felt were underachieving and it was maths back then. Back then it was maths of the day. Um, so we, were, we targeted specific groups of children. Um, there was a, a group of six or seven girls in year four, able, uh, committed, uh, hardworking, reliable girls, but they were massively underachieving in maths. Um, so we started with them plus a group of boys um, in year three. Um, and we, we did group work with them, extra sessions, built the confidence, then we rolled it out from there. We had incredible success with that group of girls when they got to the end of year six. Um, and that really was the catalyst for us to say, this is the way we want to go as a school moving forward. Um, you know, and um, physically active learning is inextricably linked to, to positive mental health and well-being. And both of those things contribute to high outcomes. Um, and so if you're looking for, for your school to be successful, you know, there are many ways to judge success, aren't there? But, you know, for me, it's about children wanting to learn. The biggest thing we have to do as a primary school is to instill in our children a love of learning. Um, you know, how do you feel when you take part in a maths lesson? You know, I want children to say, I love it. And, uh, and John knows this story. When I, when I first went to Holy Family, we did a survey of children, what you, your 10 favorite subjects, put them in order. Uh, I, as a mathematician who wanted to break down barriers in maths, I was horrified to see maths at number nine out of 10. Um, and now it's up in the top three. You know, we had uh, year two, did some biographies last term, uh, 23 out of 30 wrote in there independently, either they were good at maths or that maths was there, or that they loved maths. And that's what we want. If children are saying, I love it, um, then they're going to put themselves heart and soul into their learning. And they hey, are I just ask them how long you've been using Teach Active? Um, since 2014, I think, John, is that right? Okay, so quite some time. Um, so in a moment, I'm going to come back to you, Steve, and ask, you know, what does it look like? Uh, and kind of maybe talk about some of the benefits that your children are now showing. And um, before we do, um, John, can I get you to just do a kind of first three or four minute demo on people's screens? So they can just, uh, you know, people coming for the first time don't know what Peach Active is. Can you give a kind of little whistle stop tour for us, please? Yeah, of course. And what I'll do is I think it's always nice if I share my screen with you. It's always nice to actually see um, it in action. 
So if I just um, come to this and I will actually share with you and, and let's see if we can actually get it up and yeah, up. see that yeah. to see some children taking part and having a go. So there's a, just a little bit of delay there. So um, on the video, you'll see some children taking part, some teachers talking a little bit about the impact that it's had at their school. And then I'll just give you a little bit of an overview of the actual resource itself. John, we can't see anything yet. Um, ...are passionate about active learning, incorporating physical activity into the English and maths curriculum, and using this approach... To One more time. Ah, nothing, it wasn't working. One of the activities. No, it doesn't seem to be on the screen. Maybe just go, okay. through, go through your slides. Sorry, guys, what we'll do then. So, sorry, Ross, you didn't, have, didn't hear anything. Okay. Uh, but I'm hoping that you can hear me now and I'll give you, we'll go back to the video afterwards. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> technical glitch. Okay, so let me give you a little overview of what Teach Active is. So, as I mentioned, when I was a peer advisor, this is kind of where it all started and, and thinking, just like Steve did at his school, how can I um, use my the children's love of being active to engage them in physical activity? And I had a slide of ideas and uh, sorry, a file of ideas, and that had a huge impact into the schools that I worked. It was part of a, an Ofsted sharing of good practice paper. It was part of a DFE project. And actually, because it had such success where I taught, which was on the Wirral, um, sort of between Chester and Liverpool there, um, then we actually thought, well, why can't it have impact on schools, you know, and, and teachers and children all over the country and, and further afield? So it's that online resource that provides you with lesson plans and resources on how to deliver the English and the maths curriculum, but through physical activity. Um, it's not a scheme of work. Teachers don't say I have to use it in this particular way. What they do is they pick it up and use the aspects which are most relevant to them. And they can say, I like that. I don't like that. I like that, but I'm going to personalize it. And I think that's one of the, the beautiful things about Teach Active is it, it, its flexibility. And it can sit alongside and complement any scheme of work. And it can be used as a whole class uh, tool. So you'd be able to pick up any of these plans and be able to say, OK, I'm going to do this with all of my children. But also it works really well as an intervention program or for, with groups of children as well. Um, just like Steve mentioned with that, that group that he had where perhaps they were disengaged or they're maybe underperforming or they, they need that little bit of a confidence boost. So I'm going to try the video again. I'm going to just go back one slide and I'll look at what uh, Ross's face to give yes or no, depending on whether, whether we want to stick with it. Um, but I just think it's always lovely to see some children taking part. So let's try again. Teach Active are passionate about active learning, incorporating physical activity into the English and maths curriculum, and using this approach to really drive up attitudes and attainment within these key subjects. from Teach Active because the minute we mention we're going to do one of the activities straight away are keen to get involved, smiles on the faces and really want to join in which is just so pleasing as a teacher. But it gets the children engaged, it gets them active, gets them moving and thinking. Once you've tried it a couple of times it's a go-to for lessons because it is so easy. They can choose their objectives go to a drop down menu and the resources and lesson plans are there for you. That helps save teachers hours of planning time. The biggest thing is pupils really want to join in and take part with all the different activities that we've given them. So I would definitely recommend it to other schools. We've got children now that love uh, maths and really enjoy and are engaged in it and that's really shown in the results. They want to learn then. They don't realise they're learning actually. Not only will it impact on your data, your standards, your outcomes, but you'll see a renewed um, vigour and enthusiasm and enjoyment um, across both pupils and staff. Containing over 3,000 plans mapped to the primary curriculum and covering every objective from foundation stage to year six. 
Teach Active will save your teachers hours of planning time and complement any scheme of work and it will really allow active learning to become embedded within your school. Great, thank you, John. Um, could I bring Steve uh, in again, Steve? Can I just ask, um, you know, what, what are the benefits that you've seen in your school with your children, I, I guess, prior to COVID? Um, I, I, maybe if I can put you in a corner and just talk about what difference it's made to maybe attendance, to energy levels in the classroom, those types of things. Yeah, sure. Um, I think I need to start with the biggest barrier um, to learning, which is which is a sort of fear of being wrong. And again, going back to maths for this, um, what, what active learning has done is it's broken down the, the barrier of fear. Um, you see children outside or doing an active lesson, they're far more willing to give it a go. That's the first thing. If you don't get children on the road, you can't teach them. Um, and that group, going back to that group we had, the, the biggest issue was well, they didn't like to get things wrong. In the classroom, it was too, it was too enclosed for them. Um, they felt people were looking at them. So we've had a huge increase in confidence um, and, a, and a willingness to have a go at, at everything. Um, they've learned that mistakes are part of life, you know, that I don't, in life, I'm not going to be expected to do everything on my own, to do all my own thinking, to do all my own problem solving. I'm going to, in a job, talk to other people. I'm going to ask advice from other people. They do that quite naturally now in, in active learning. It's a, and, and it's fabulous to watch them. You know, um, if you put them in a pair and, and let them go, it's wonderful to see two or three pairs coming, down, coming together, sitting together and discussing, working through a maths problem. And that's a life skill. You know, when we consider that, we try to set children up for a, for a successful, happy life, you know, and employers now, I think 95% of employers now say that um, life skills and life readiness is far more important to them and far more critical than academic qualifications. And, and active learning, physically active learning gives you that communication skills, social skills, teamwork, leadership, um, problem solving skills, critical thinking. These are the types of skills that we've seen in our children really, really develop the independence. And we sort of lost it a little bit when they came back after the first lockdown, that little bit of independence and confidence had dropped a little bit. Um, and we've gone back to where we wanted them for Christmas and we're probably gonna have to do the same again. Um, so that's a, that's a really big thing for us. Um, I think, what was your second question, Ross? Um, I'm just curious to learn, you know, um, what what differences you've seen in your children before COVID in terms of attendance, you know, better memory recall, you know, emotions. And I know the, the kind of COVID restrictions is going to put, a, put it all back to kind of stage one again. But um, what kind of things were you seeing using Teach Active prior to the pandemic? Um, well, our attendance is we're sort of averaging about ninety eight and a half percent attendance. Um, children love coming to school. If we put on any clubs, we had a maths club going for a while, which was essentially active maths after school. We had 24 children come to that, which was the maximum we could have. Um, they, they loved the lessons. You know, I, I currently go in to year five every Friday morning, sorry, year four every Friday morning to, to teach active maths. They absolutely love it. Um, it's just made a, made a massive difference to the way they look at their at their school life, you know, and I think someone once said to me, you know, you, you never really remember what people say to you or what they do, but you'll always remember how they made you feel. And we've got a situation now at our school where, where they feel good about maths. Um, and it's not just down to, to active learning, but I think a huge, huge part of it is. Um, and if we took that away, I think, I think they would really miss that. Okay, uh, thank you, Steve. Um, um, John, I'm going to bring you in a second, just maybe ask for your expertise and your, you know, you're clearly passionate about physical activity. Just before I do, everyone, um, I've got a little survey on your screen there. Just tell us briefly um, what kind of physical things did you do? I haven't covered everything, but maybe just tick as many as you can. And let's just get a little snapshot as to what you were offering your children um, in your school settings. Uh, and if I haven't got your choice there, just put it in the chat box and I'll read uh, one or two out. Uh, so John, uh, putting your kind of physical active learning expertise hat on, uh, 
you know, tell us a, a, a bit more about what it can do for memory. We all kind of know that there are benefits, but maybe give us some concrete evidence. You have to unmute yourself, sir, so we can hear you. <laughs> There we go. OK, so uh, I, I'm sure there might be, you know, there, there'll be other people on the chat who actually can, you know, offer something here as, as well. And, and, you know, I um, it's great to, to look at what neuroscientists say. It's great to say what and psychologists say. But often what I prefer to hear is actually teachers who are on the shop floor who say this is what I've done and this is the difference that, that I see. But I, I could give you a list as long as my arm, but I, I tend to break it down into four things. And, and the first one is that it's going to make your children more active. And that's really important. We've got uh, an, a generation of children that are, you know, not active enough, in, in, in fairness. And, and therefore, we have to try and make the, the school day more active. We're challenged to do this. Um, and what I say to schools is, you know, they might do all sorts of things like um, they might do uh, extra quick clubs, they might do wake up and shake up, they might do go noodle, they might do um, daily mile, all of these things which I absolutely love and I did them as a self as, as a teacher. But as, as an addition to that, I say rather than doing more, 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 just do what you're already doing, but in a physically active way. And therefore for teachers they think, oh great, I don't have to do more, I just maybe need to change my perhaps mindset a little bit and just like we're planning when we plan our, you know, our learn to learn and our Kagan structures, we then think about planning movement in as well. But the other one is attitude. You know, I won't go into too much, but Steve's mentioned it. Children love it. Children love being up and active. They're not born to be sedentary and sat down for long periods of time. The third one is it supports attainment. Um, children will retain information learning in this way. They'll make good progress. Um, they'll be able to uh, master key skills, then retain that information, recall that information at a later date. And it really is something really powerful that I've seen in terms of um, being able to really help children uh, achieve better in these key subjects. And for some children who then find it quite hard to engage with something like maths, for example, just breaking down those barriers, um, showing them that it's enjoyable, that can really help. And then the fourth one is the idea of whole child development. And, the, and the, the idea that I would give here is that I often say to children, why is, physically, why is being physically active important? And children will tell you, and you can ask your children this tomorrow, they'll say it's to be slim and fit and healthy. And I would say, yes, but do you also know that it helps your memory? It helps your concentration. It helps you to be more productive within the school day. It's going to give you, you're going to sleep better. You're going to have more energy in terms of social skills, less anxiety, teamwork, resilience, determination, all of these things. And I think um, a great example of that at the moment is, you know, all of these people joining us today and, and either live or watching this afterwards, you think during lockdown, what, you know, do, uh, many, for many of us, we made sure that every day we went for a walk, we did a bike ride, or we maybe started Pilates or yoga, or we did some form of exercise. And it wasn't about staying slim, fit and healthy. It was about our emotional and mental well-being, because we know that we are in a better place. And we know that our life is enhanced when we are physically active. And that's what we want to ensure with children that 70%, which some research will show you, 70% of the school day, we don't want it to be sedentary. We want them to be up and active. And, you know, that helps whole child development. It's happy children, and it's why we all came into teaching. Um, and, it, of course, it's, it's, it's one of many brilliant things that you will do as a teacher, but I do think it can be a key component. Thank you, John. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to log in and just show us behind the scenes on the uh, Teach Active and how people can sign up for the free trial. Um, before okay. I do, um, on the screen, everyone, you've got the results from that last little survey, so you can kind of just see what everyone's said. I'm going to read out a few comments. Um, I've been to a forest school in Cyprus, uh, 35 degrees Celsius, so let's not forget forest schools. Um, yes. Comments, I'm a physio working in special education. We use lots of active learning, particularly good for kids with autism and developmental delay. I can see my good friend, uh, Professor Pam Bernard, watching Pam give us a wave from the University of Cambridge. Pam's put in the chat box, active learning, sensory experience, 
experimental learning offers alternative ways of learning and knowing being active engaging the body uh, and overwhelming research evidence to support this um thank you pam um so keep your comments coming through um now steve i i I know you as a head teacher will be just as passionate as I am about teacher well-being. Um, and I guess from two progs, so again, more two questions in one for you. One, during lockdown, uh, managing teacher well-being, but also how has, you know, Teach Active supported your teacher's workload? Yeah, thanks, Ross. Um, just before I answer that, just to uh, and add something to what John said. Um, there was a recent study about um, active learning, which said that regular active learning once a week can increase your memory tasks by up to 20% after one year. Um, it, and this thing about red brain, blue brain, you know, your brain goes cold after 20 minutes. When I was a year six teacher, I went through a phase of, before I, we used to do practice SATS tests, which I hated. Um, I used to take mine outside for exercise before they did the test. So when we were doing, back in the days when there were two papers, for one paper, I'd take them outside for 20 minutes exercise, and then the other one I wouldn't, and the, the results were quite remarkable, how much, better, how much better they did after exercising than when they didn't. Um, so that's just an aside. In terms of, of teacher wellbeing um, during lockdown, um, as a, it's been really tough. They're, they're working harder than ever. You know, my teachers at the moment are saying they're doing double the workload for half the output. Um, so really it's just a case of, of praising them and telling them how well they're doing all the time, um, taking away as much as I can possibly take away from them. And Teach Active is a, a classic example of what really works because I don't have a problem ever with, with working hard or thinking or planning things but I don't want to be building a wheel if a wheel is already there for me to use. If I can polish the wheel and, and put the bells and whistles on it, um, that's what I'd rather do. I'd rather spend my time thinking about those 30 children in my class and how I reach them, and make sure every single one is challenged and supported and learns. And that's what Teach Active does. It, it's brought, you know, the lesson plan is there. The teacher can print it off. It's all adaptable, you can change the resources, you can change the numbers, you can change the questions. So you've got your structure. So the teachers can sit down and say, I've got the structure of my lesson. How am I gonna make this really, really meaningful to my children? So then they can adapt it, then they can use their skills um, and their knowledge of every child to make it work. So they're not planning from scratch. Um, they can take what are fantastic lesson plans, but they can adapt them to use them to make it really work. So in terms of workload for us, that mm. really does bring it down. If you've you got one or two sound bites from your teachers that have said, oh, wow, this is great, uh, you know, X, Y, Z. Uh, yeah, so um, what was it? I, I, wrote, I wrote one down. Yeah, so my, one of my teachers said, it's very easy to use it as it's tailored to every single area of the curriculum. It motivates children regardless of their ability uh, and it naturally fits with collaborative learning. Um, another one said, it's great because I've got a lesson structure already in place. I can spend my time adapting the lessons mm -hmm. to effectively target the children. And another one said, it's wonderful to see they lose the reticence to, children lose the reticence to join in. And they really go for it, they're all engaged. Uh, and that gives a great satisfaction. And that came from somebody who said at the start when I first went, no, it doesn't work. Active learning doesn't work. Um, she was a very, very traditional, um, style of teacher so yeah there's three three different people Thanks, steve uh, john i'm going to bring you for another demo in a second uh, steve one question how have you been looking after your kind of physical well-being during uh, covid what have you been doing my personal physical well-being yes well i um i said i established a charity back in in july for to support children's mental health uh, called okay. belief found belief foundation okay. uh, and on the 19th of September, I did a marathon. So I was tra training from February. <laughs> so I did lots of that, lots of outside stuff, lots of gardening. Um, always right, busy. Brilliant. Always busy. Okay, congratulations. Can you just remind us all what the charity's called? Uh, it's called Believe Foundation, B with a double, B double E, L I E V. Okay, Foundation. we'll put that in the chat box shortly. Uh, thank you. Uh, John, uh, why Teach Active? Give us a little whistle stop tour again. Uh, show us the platform a little bit more. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I would love to. Okay, so I'll just take you over to the home page here. So you can all just go and take a look by going on to Teach Active in your browser, or of course, just Googling it or use whatever search engine. You can have a little read here and um, just about Teach Active itself and, and kind of what it is, which I've kind of already given you an overview of. And you'll see, as well as um, Steve's school, there's other case studies here as well about how they've used Teach Active and the success that they've had. Um, and we are also, we work in partnership with the, the Youth Sport Trust that some of you may know. Okay, so here, just in the top right, just sign up for a free trial. So it's completely free. Um, it's not like anything else. It's not going to start charging you after so many months or anything. It's completely free. What we want to do is just for you to say, have a go. Here's 50 plans on how to teach um, reading, writing and maths through physical activity. Have a go. I'm going to log into the, the full site and show you um, why so much. So, you know, my name's John, but I'm just logging in as a, co a colleague of mine, Gareth. Um, so as I log in, this is what we are presented with. So this is just the typical dashboard. And on the left-hand side tends to be messages, but let me concentrate over here. Here's our English and maths lessons, which help with the curriculum time. But we've also got at the moment things to help uh, like Steve, like for example, remote learning lessons, like isolation packs, uh, homework, which is really important. And just something, if any of you ever do consider introducing Teach Active, we do launch it for you and do free whole school training to get everyone on board because we want to make sure that your school is going to have maximum impact. But all you need to do is to say what year group you're working with, what's the area of maths, what's the objective, and then you'll get a list of games on how to teach it through physical activity. So, for example, maybe I'm a year six teacher, and this is exactly what Steve's teachers will do. They'll then look at the, what is it that they want to cover in maths? And we've got all of the different areas here. And it's mapped to the primary maths curriculum, uh, the English curriculum, the English maths curriculum. But of course, you'd be able to, if you don't follow that, be able to see how you can use it. I then choose my objective that I might be looking at for that week or for that particular day. Every single objective from the maths curriculum is here. So once I've chosen that, I then get a list of games on how I can teach it, but through getting the children up and about. And you can have a look like that, or if not, there's always games to choose from. But if it is something that you like, then on the right-hand side, you'll see your lesson plan. So you can print this off, save it, but then you've got all the resource cards that you need for the activity to go ahead. So an example of this is like math sums. So this is like when, when uh, Steve says about doing the SATs paper outside. This is typical year six SAT questions, but rather than having the children sat down, we're going to do maths orienteering. Um, a lot of teachers have done this. They love it. The te children love it, but it takes us a long time to plan it. And therefore, we might just do it during National School Sport Week or a Health Week, where I, what I would suggest is, well, let's do active maths, you know, once a week at least. So everything can be here. And whatever your group you're teaching, whatever area of maths you're delivering, whatever objective you want to teach your children, you will find activities on how to do it through movement. And this is why, of course, there's over 2,000 lesson plans. And very quickly, if I just take you over to the English, um, we were just maths. Um, Steve mentioned that we used to be called maths of the day. And then it worked so well that our school said, well, what about English? So the same, I'm going to choose my year group. Is it writing? So perhaps with writing, I can have a look at all my, my grammar work here. So I'll give you an example here. So have we ever talked how, about paragraphs? Now this might be quite mundane, it quite, might be quite boring. We might teach it to them, but only two weeks later they've forgotten. Well, let's play a game. Let's put it into an activity. Let's help them to recall and retain that information. And very similar, of course, with Ofsted at the moment, fostering the love of reading is very, very important and will be in every school, regardless of where you are. Can we teach reading through getting children up and about? Well, of course we can. So we're going to choose what genre we want to look at. So I'm going to choose a story. I'm going to look at all the key skills that I've got to get the children to be familiar with. And then once I've done that, I can get a game. Now, the other thing to mention here is on the right hand side, as well as the lesson plan and resources, we also now provide you with the text. So for the story, we provide you with the text here. And similar, if it was a poem or if it's a letter or if it's a diary entry or piece of persuasive, whatever it may be, 
we always provide the text for you so that you've got every single thing. So if your teachers believe in the benefits of physical activity and they think actually this could really make a difference within my school, then of course, what you can do is use Teach Active to um, allow that perhaps to become really sustainable and give teachers the tools for them to go, wow. A couple of questions for you, John. Uh, in the chat box from Emma, we are running this successfully in maths and the session has been dominated by maths check. Can you tell us how the English is doing? Yeah, of course, of course. So um, thank you for the question. So with, with maths, it was very much well our journey. We started with English English last year um, and we've had some, we, we've had the, now the vast majority of our schools introduce the English as well. And we started off with all the grammar and the gaps and then only since um, uh, September really have we had the full array of all of the reading so that's still within its early days but certainly with the feedback that we get from schools is you know again ones have been really uh, positive children's engagement and yeah love it, enjoying it but also the attainment element is I always say um, yes active learning and yes teach active is great but we could give this to any teacher you know, it, it's the teacher that then makes the difference. It's the school, it's the other elements as well. I've got one more question for you, and then one from me, and I'm going to go to Steve. Um, in regards to the lessons, how long do they last for? And are there mm -hmm. follow-up activities? That's a question from Dan. I, I heard the first, yeah, how long do they last? Some of them last the whole, the, the, the kind of the whole main part of the lesson, where others would be kind of the old school kind of starter and plenary, if you if you think of it like that. So um, the, I think, again, the beauty of it is if you had a, if you perhaps had the hall and you might say, well, I've got three games here that are quite short, you might actually go and take all three of them or do a bit of circuit training and get the children around yeah. activities where others are bigger. So just for context, people watching overseas, uh, the, the terminology starter is, is literally a, a kind of first five, ten minute starter exercise that, that to get the lesson started. And um, my, my sticking question, John, is how much is it going to cost if I switch from free to, um, you know, my whole school? And, and then I'm going to talk about the head teacher's perspective in a moment with Steve. How much OK, you you're yeah, obviously your trial is free. If you want to, the price on the website if you want to, you can buy english or maths on its own for 575 pounds if you want to buy the full teach active package it's 975 pounds and that's for an annual subscription our retention rates are running really high around about 82 percent schools tend to stay with us we do deliver training for you to make sure it's working and just how schools just in in the uk um, primary schools get uh, their PE and sport funding internationally hopefully you'll get something similar um, we're endorsed as a good use of spending that money so for you know for seven five is that you can put active learning across your school how long could i use the free trial for uh, it's for two weeks it's for 14 days you can print everything off if you want to and if you ever want an extension we're a nice company we'll, let, we'll, let, we'll allow it to go on a little bit longer so uh, Steve, put my head teacher hat on. I've seen Teach Active in a webinar as a teacher. I want to come to my head teacher and say, you know, funding and all sorts of things. Now, what would be your best advice for a teacher who's seen this, loves it, and wants to talk about their head teacher and sell it to them? And, and as a head teacher, how would you kind of engineer or protect your funds to be able to purchase this? Uh, maybe just for a year to begin with, and then maybe a longer term like yourself. Uh, well, in terms of the cost, obviously, John's mentioned the uh, PE and sport premium, £900 out of 17 and a bit thousands for, for a school like mine is, is not very much. I think the, the biggest selling point for a teacher going to a head teacher is the impact this will have on your outcomes. I think in 2017, the charity Minds did a, did a, a report where they said there's too much focus on um, academic achievement and not enough on children's, on promoting the well-being of children. But I would argue that I agree with that to an extent, but I, I would argue you can marry those two things in because physically active learning will give you higher out outcomes ultimately. And I've sold it to other head teachers, Ross, who haven't been that interested. I've sold it on that and said, look, if you really, really are, are serious about giving your children the best opportunities in life, and you also want to tick your results box, 
this is the way to go. You know, give it a go. It, it makes a massive difference. So Steve, what evidence do you have that it works? G give me kind of some hard facts, data, results, attendance. Uh, I know you can yeah, well, up, but um, maybe just kind of key key points. Yeah, look, I, I always get um, embarrassed about talking about results because I honestly, we, we didn't start this off to get into the top whatever percentage of schools. We started this off to make children say, I love maths. Um, but if you look at if you look at the impact in our school, um, we've been in the, the top quartile for the last five years for maths. We've been in the top two percent, uh, the top four percent. Um, you know, our, our progress scores have been. I think we've averaged three point nine progress score um, over the last few years. Uh, our, our scaled score for maths one hundred nine over the last three years. Um, you know, our disadvantaged children. Um, progress in in 2018 and 2019 was was over three uh, I think the national average was 0 0.3 um, so it, it's had a massive massive impact on results um, as well you know, alongside attitude which which for me is what it's all about you know we want our children to go to secondary school and really be confident so they can do well there and then move on in life. Steve, I've got a good question here from Matthew Preston. Uh, what have been the barriers that you faced introducing it into your school? Yeah, great question, Matthew. Great question. You, um, you know, it's getting everybody on board, um, you know, and for this to work, you have to have your head teacher and your leadership team on board. Um, it needs to be a culture in school that this is what we, this is the way we're going to go. Um, but even me as a head teacher, you know, it's taken some convincing for some teachers. You know, they they'll do a couple and enjoy it, and then you realise they haven't done anything for weeks because uh, they're just not that way inclined. So it's it's reaching everybody um, if it's not their natural inclination to be physically active themselves, um, and you. Not all the time, but you, you sometimes find that's the more experienced members of staff who've been around the block a bit and uh, perhaps don't want to change as quickly. And, and, and any advice for, um, you know, teachers, you know, wanting to approach their head teachers and then protecting the budget or new head teachers trying to work out, you know, I, I guess most people are thinking here in an English context, uh, maybe can you could give some insights into how you've maybe protected some, you know, kind of PE funds, those types of things, Steve? Yeah, I, as I said earlier, I think um, with the well, whilst the PE and sport premium is there um, to spend this type of money on something which it isn't just a fad teach active, it works, it works, and there's a lot of research behind it. Um, if we're looking, especially now, children coming back, there was a survey in 2019 by the Children's Society in 2019, so pre pre pandemic, which said that children were the least happiest they'd been for 10 years. Um, and something like 220,000 children in a, in a national UK survey said they had low well-being. To improve your well-being, physical activity is, is proven, you know, it's research proven that it will lift your well-being. Um, so this is the time now. Mm -hmm. they've, been, they've been locked up in their, in their houses, especially this time around. Um, let's get them active. Let's get them moving. It's going to help their well-being. It's going to help their, their physical well-being and also it's going to improve their engagement, their attendance, their love of, of learning, uh, and ultimately their outcomes. Uh, thank you, Steve. Um, I, I totally agree. Now, um, I'm going to bring John in in a second. I'm just going to quote some statistics from our survey when we started. I'm going to put one more survey on your screen, everybody. Um, John's mentioned uh, that you get free training as part of the sign up. Uh, and we've got one more question, John, as I bring you in here. Um, uh, you know, what are the kind of recurrent resources? How can it support students with kind of learning difficulties? And just before I pass over to you, just uh, a reference. Um, when we first started, there was uh, 68 of you watching now. Um, 24 of you said you don't do any physical active learning in your school. I, I don't know where you're located, but that's uh, a good quarter. Um, and then the other question that I asked was that many of you wanted to see what it is. So I'm going to put a question on your screen. Uh, telling me a little bit more about what you think about each active now and can feed this all back to John. So that's on your screen. Uh, John, over to you. Uh, free training and how can you support uh, students with uh, learning needs? Yeah, free training is something that we've just introduced. We want to make sure that our schools are using Teach Active. 
we you know we work with schools all over the uk and internationally we monitor your progress we phone you up if you're not using it and we say why aren't you using it you know do you need some help um, in the nicest possible way because we know that teachers are busy and sometimes it can just because another initiative has come along so on the dashboard we every single week during term time we offer free training for either schools who are in their first three months of their license or for schools who have been on longer. And you can simply sign up. We do a Zoom online with all of your staff and we ensure that they're really uh, enthused, um, understand the benefits to their children and understand how can they then go away and, and, and plan it into their kind of teaching and learning. In terms of, you know, it helps all children. We, we work with a lot of mainstream schools. We work with a lot of special schools as well. And those schools coming back saying, you know, of course it works really well for perhaps where um, children have certain learning difficulties and they need, you know, that over learning will really help them and that learning in a little bit of a different way. Um, and this can really unlock the potential um, in, in, in terms of, you know, how active learning can do that. Again, there's lots of research which would show us that, you know, our brain is going to act better, act like a sponge and soak up that information. Um, lots, of info, lots of research, again, specifically about children with special educational needs and, and active learning being something that can unlock the potential for them as well. Um, and all I would say to schools is, you know, I never give, I'm a teacher at heart, I never give schools a hard sell, I just say try it, you know, try it with your schools, with your children, and see if, if exactly what we said at the start, are they more active, have they got a smile on their face, is it supporting attainment, and is it helping that whole child development, and, you know, I'm sure it will, and, you know, and if anyone wants to further chat after this, you can sign up for a one-to-one -one with me, um via our website i'm quite happy to give you a further demonstration and talk to you about your bespoke needs that perhaps you've got at your school for example earlier on today i was on with a teacher from a, um, a special needs primary school and we we spoke specifically about her children so again if i can help you in that way do get in touch okay um so thank you john uh, we're coming to a close everybody and um, wave put questions in the chat box i'm going to export all the chats and then i'll send them to john and then i'll post all as many answers as we can tomorrow um with the recording uh, and john's slides in a, an email to you all tomorrow morning with this video um here are the results so i guess from me uh, five people not sure but it's good to see the majority of people really interested in teach active i think there's nothing wrong with tying up for that pre-trial and have a little uh, snoop through uh, on what's going on um steve i'll kind of bring you back in just for one more kind of nugget of wisdom um if that's possible putting you on the spot uh, about how teach active has, has, has made a difference to your children Um, more confidence, um, better collaborative work, uh, communication skills have, in, have in improved, social skills have improved, um, willingness to have a go, a greater resilience um, and fortitude when they're, when they're faced with problem solving. Um, happier, they're just, they're just a, it's a happy bunch of people um, and they want to learn, you know, and we've been in a good place Results have been great, keeps offset off my back. Um, but I think the, the most important thing, you know, any teacher, you know, we, we do this job because we love it. We, you know, and we, take, we put up with a lot of rubbish, but when we're in the classroom with the, or wherever we are with our 30 children, we absolutely love it. And to see the children bursting with excitement and a buzz of going around the place is a brilliant feeling for a, for a teacher and certainly for a head teacher. Um, when maths goes on in the morning, that that's how it. That's just a, a great reward. And I think I would encourage anyone to try it. And and if your head teacher, for the teachers out there, if your head teacher is giving you a hard time uh, and doesn't want to listen to you, then then give give him my him or her my number and ask ask them to call me. Because <laughs> um, it works. It really works. Thank you, Steve. John, uh, your chance to share a, a nugget of wisdom for us all, please. Uh, final comment. Oh, my final comment would just be, yeah, to have a go. I hope that, you know, some of you or do get in touch because I love talking to people. I love the partner organisations. Um, and, you know, as I said, ha have a go and see if this is something. If I can help you in any way in trying to get other staff members on board, sharing with you some slides or anything like that, 
um, then you know do get in touch I'm quite happy to share anything that, that, that I've got in order to, to do that but do have a go give it a try and then get in touch okay so uh, that brings us to the end everybody uh, thank you John uh, for your expertise thank you Steve for your wisdom and all your hard work you're doing with your school community during this very very challenging time hard enough being a head teacher in normal circumstances so it's going to be incredibly difficult right now um, I've put the Teach Active free trial sign up in the chat box. Uh, I'll export the chat, deal with all the questions and send everything over to you tomorrow. Uh, my name is Ross. I've been your host. I wish you a pleasant uh, day, evening, morning, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, and just for a little bit of virtual fun, until we meet again physically, um, I've been playing a bit of sad piano music. So as you log off, just wave goodbye. Um, and we'll see each other again soon. Okay, so thank you for watching, everybody. Nice, nice to meet you all. Look forward to working with you all in the future. Bye, everybody. I'll stay here till you all log off. <laughs> Take care.